All right, so let's break down the game film on this first Los Angeles Costco that I went to this weekend. As you can see here, there are some pretty good deals available. The Oban 14 is for sale. I really like this whiskey. It's got um, like a very like briny, salt watery flavor to it, which I guess you would guess by having a seagull on there. Um, but it's pretty good and it's on sale right now for $5 off, so it's basically 8% less or so. So if you're into Oban, right now is a good time to get it. There should still be some left at your local Costco if they normally sell it. These, of course, are in Los Angeles. There's two of them uh, that I went to. Uh, you can see, obviously, as well, that there is a lot of whiskey on the shelves. Uh, it's, you know, wherever they were being held up at, if they were floating around out the, lo the Long Beach um, Harbor, they're finally starting to get delivered in, and we're starting to see a lot of whiskey show up all at once, which is great for those who are ready and willing and able to get the whiskey that they've been waiting for. Another good one that I see here is this uh, Lafroig, which is a pretty good whiskey. It's a good stand-in for Lagavulin, which has had a pretty um, acute, <laughs> to say the least, acute shortage over the last couple of months. So, you know, if you can find Lagavulin, get as much of it as you can when you can. Uh, but if you can't, Lafroig is also a good stand-in for it in the meantime. It has that peaty smokiness um, that, uh, that a lot of folks really like, and including myself. You can see there's a lot of uh, red breast that is here as well, which is Irish whiskey. I don't know much about it. I have never really tried it before, but it does look pretty good. And also I wanted to bring the attention to this Whistle Pig 15. So this is one of the bottles that I did end up buying um, because it looks interesting. Again, I don't know much about Whistle Pig. I know it's from Vermont and I haven't tried it yet, um, but I did end up picking it up in this haul because I read the reviews and the reviews were pretty good. I'd say they, you know, overall they give it a seven or eight out of 10. Um, some a little bit higher, some a little bit lower, but I'm willing to give it a shot uh, with that. And anytime I see a price for a whiskey or a bourbon that's at $150 or more, it always raises my eyebrows just a little bit. So I saw it on there. There wasn't any bottles out there, but they, I guess they did have some uh, in the steel, as they, as they say. And so I was able to coax some of those down and got, um, I got that one. Um, this other one that I, I see here that's also $1.99 is the, from the Bourbon Craft Spirits. I read a lot of reviews online of it while I was kind of standing around deciding whether to get it or not. And the reviews just said that the taste and the flavor and the palate of it just didn't justify the $1.99 price of it. It was good, but it wasn't justifying the $199. So I did actually pass on this one, which maybe I'll live to regret. I haven't tried it yet. We'll have to see. Uh, this is the Costco number two. You can see here uh, that they have uh, Irish whiskey as well as this 12-year blended Scotch whiskey from Kirkland. I might actually try this one of these days. Kirkland has never let me down. It's not pretty, um, but it's never let me down, whether it's uh, whiskey or tequila or hot dogs or really anything. So <laughs> I'm willing to give it a try, maybe in the near future. McAllen 12 is back. I know a lot of times I've been to the Costco multiple, multiple times. One McAllen or be empty shelves over this last couple of months. This uh, Glen Fetich 14 looks interesting. Maybe I have to try that in the near future, but didn't get anything this time. Uh, this one also has the Oban for sale, if you like that. And also this Balvenie, I think is how you pronounce it, which is pretty amazing uh, when you can get it. They put it in these uh, rum casks, so it has a very sweet flavor to it. I really like it as uh, maybe not a daily drinker, but something you can drink uh, you know, once a week uh, if, if you're inclined to do so. Something to, that has a little special flavor to kind of alter it up. Uh, Blue Label, great whiskey. Uh, it's available. It, it's, in, it's in depth here. And it's great whiskey, especially if you're going to give it to folks who are maybe not major whiskey drinkers, um, but uh, they'll see it, they'll like it. It's a pretty box. It's got a nice prestige feel to it, and it's a good one. Um, here's the glass case. You know, I've noticed that a lot of the Costco's are starting to get real heavy on tequila and a lot lighter on whiskey. My assumption is because the whiskey has been in such short uh, availability that they're trying to fill it in with um, tequila instead or some other types of cognac or other types of alcohol that they're able to get that may be analogous. Also, they got the Woodford Reserve, which is a great daily drinker. Maker's Mark, also another great uh, daily drinker. And Dickel, which I know nothing about, but next time I see it, I think I'm going to buy it just because I like the name of it. And then I'll probably read the reviews and see how it tastes. And then lastly, uh, 
Okay, one of the things I really noticed here is that there are two types of whiskey at Costco right now in the Japanese variety. There are the Japanese whiskeys that are super duper cheap and are not aged, so they don't have that problem where they're trying to speed up the 12 year aging process to actually get it produced and put out. So it can be mass produced, it can become available. It's always there, especially this uh, Centauri whiskey uh, at Costco. So that's the first type, there's nothing wrong with it. It is what it is, you know, it's always available. It's probably good to drink, I've never drank it, but um, it's probably okay. But on the other side, the, my least favorite out of the type of two Japanese whiskeys is these types of Japanese whiskeys like this Yamamoto here. Yamato? Yamato. Yamato, that's right. And it's because of the fact that I got burned before on this is that these kind of whiskeys, so obviously we, we're in a marketplace and Japanese whiskey is a, a hot commodity right now. People are buying it up and I buy it up anytime I see it. And so uh, marketplaces typically when there's a short supply, they try to invent new supply to fill the demand. And anytime I see a Japanese whiskey that is just overly Japaneseized, Japanized, um, you know, it's got... Uh, you know, kabuki mask or samurai swords or, you know, these kind of really garish, loud, kind of Western perspective on what Japanese, Japan is, then I started to get real suspicious, uh, especially with the price tag at over $100 on this Yamato. So um, I did see a bottle of this, the actual bottle, and it does have a, a very, like, ridiculous samurai mask on the top. And a lot of these ones are not Japanese whiskey, or maybe they are, or they're like inspired Japanese whiskey, or they're inspired by Japanese whiskey, but they're really kind of whiskeys that have been thrown together to try to fit that demand and create the supply um, to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that, just I always, every time I see that, I start getting super suspicious because I know that it's not real Japanese whiskey. Because when you look at the traditional Japanese whiskeys, the Nike, the Mika, the um, uh, Yamazaki, um, and some of the other ones, you know, it's pretty understated. The bottle's nice, it has maybe some writing on it, but it's not like ninjas fighting samurais on top of dragons. <laughs> and when you see that, it starts to get uh, very suspicious. And then finally at the end here, we have some other notable mentions. Uh, the Muckety Muck 25 year, never heard of it, don't know anything about it, uh, but I did see it in there and I knew it's pretty rare, so I decided to buy it, um, not knowing anything about it. and you know, and realizing that rarity doesn't always mean that it is good. It also doesn't always mean that it's valuable. Just because it's rare doesn't mean either of those things, but it looked interesting. I decided to pick it up as well, and there's only one left. So uh, that along with the Red Breast 21, which had just one single box left. So I decided to pick that one up because it looked interesting and the normal Red Breast so we can compare it to the Red Breast 21 um, and see if, you know, there is a big difference and try to get my feet wet in the Irish whiskey game.